chat so adrian adrian just just tell us a bit first about what you do what you really really do what i really really do <laughs> <laughs> well hi bev lovely to be here today so what is it that i really really do um i am the founder of yes you can training and i help women overcome their fear of public speaking and presentation skills but a little bit more than that because some people then think oh that's my that's not my cup of tea i don't do big talk talks i don't do uh presentations but i believe that every time we speak up is public speaking. So when you put up your hand in a meeting, that's yeah. public speaking. When you chat to your boss yeah. next to the co coffee machine, that's public speaking. Yeah. And all of it comes down, in my mind, to, to this inner confidence. Mm -hmm. I am a confidence coach. I, I help people through reinforcing and allow them the techniques that uh, allows them to tap into their inner confidence and then basically they can do anything including speaking in front of others and I, and I find that quite fascinating because um you talk about public speaking and i'm with you people anyone can speak in public I, I actually say speaking is public when you speak with thought and want an effective outcome otherwise you just have the chat <laughs> and, it's like that. and in business even if you're employed if you stand up at a meeting you have to think, you know, whatever you say has got to have an effect. So, and I'm Otherwise, gonna, it's just a chat. <laughs> yeah, it's just a chat. It's meaningless. So why do it? But I know you do sort of all sorts of stuff around this confidence thing. Yes. Do you find it easier for people to come to you if you don't mention the public speaking? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Although lots of my clients would, would find me through wanting to inspire others when they speak and that could be videos online um, start wanting to um, set up a YouTube channel or or be better at social media but often very often clients would find me through the confidence piece right. they might see someone else they know and they see this person grow grow in confidence and they'd say well what's going on there <laughs> and, and they would find me because it, it is a it is a fantastic thing to have that inner confidence because yeah. one of my taglines is that confidence has no competition and I truly believe that once we've got that inner confidence yeah then then it doesn't matter we, we no longer are looking for that external gratification and feedback because yeah. we've got it. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's like a superpower. <laughs> it is a superpower. Do you it think so? Now, you were a gymnast and I've read your bio. You, you were in um, Olympic team, were you? I wish. M oh. My discipline is not part of the Olympic Games yet. So um, it, I was a, a I was an athlete in aerobic gymnastics and and went to world championship and European championship. I'm I'm a silver medalist in 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 both of those. But that takes a lot of confidence. Any form of gymnast because you you start quite young. Don't you? gymnasts start quite young, and that yeah. takes a lot of um, well. When I say confidence, I just look at go have they got the the nerve to do some of the stuff you do. So do you think? Having done that, that helped build up your confidence in you. Absolutely. When I retired from, from sports and started my business career, and very early on, I, I became a leader, I suddenly looked around and I thought, well, sorry, my cat is in the picture. I hope that's okay. We love um, the cat. <laughs> she's, got, she's got things to say about confidence. Um, <laughs> So very early on in my leadership years, I, I realized I sort of looked around and went, oh, well, hang on a minute. All this is very familiar. The games, the power games, uh, reaching targets, working yeah. with people who you have to work with, just yeah. like in sports. Sometimes it's not your choice who you compete with or yeah. who you yeah. work with. And, and that gave me an upper hand because because I, I could deal with it and I had the resilience, I had the mindset yeah. to be able to, to 
to deal with this. And, and very soon I realized that not only I had these transferable skills, but I could help others. Yes. So, and that's when I started to build the most amazing teams because I could help individuals yeah, yeah. achieve that confidence. And is, is the discipline something to do with it? Because again, uh, my, my come from a dancing family, but not I didn't dance, but my sisters danced and, and you know, got quite high up. And, but they, they, did, they had to go to rehearsals and rehearsals and rehearsals. And I imagine gymnasts, you know, you have to. So is there a sense of discipline that helps underpin confidence? Definitely. And um, something I, I did learn through sports was being able to well discipline and then being able to organize my time yeah because i competed i studied and then i i started to work as well later on i was still competing when i was over 18 and that gave me <laughs> this laser focus of okay i'm doing this now i've got two hours to do that because then i'm going to training and then i've got some work to do and then i have school and again, this has been something so useful yeah. in my leadership years, being able to compartmentalize. I always have to say this word slowly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but <you> also, it. <laughs> <laughs> so have the focus and then being able to work with a, with a, quite a full on calendar and still yeah. be able to, yeah. um, to perform at high, high levels. Yeah. I, I'm fascinated how sports people transfer those skills. And I was talking to somebody the other day who had been um, a triathlete. A guy who you know, just looked the part and he used to do de decathlons and all sorts. And, and he <laughs> said, yeah, it's like, exhausted just thinking about it. But <laughs> he said to me, which was quite interesting, he said that because he's worked with teams as well as on his own solo, that he is quite quick at picking up people's um, not, not challenges rather than weaknesses. He, he could spot the challenge that was was creating that sense of disharmony, if you like. Yes. Do you find that when you work with people now, you can sort of see, oh, there's just that outer line. Yes, and I wonder if this comes from sports or if it's a, um, an acquired skill, but. Um, I, 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 compared to, to the gentleman you just described who, who did an individual sport, I, I did a, a group, a team yeah. sport. And one of the biggest learnings from, from, from that is that you, you are picked together, so you are put together because your trainer thinks that your abilities would yeah. work together. And to a certain level, to a certain level, you also have to be... You, you do have to like each other. But it doesn't mean that you necessarily um, work with that other person if it weren't for those circumstances. Yeah. So yeah. You, learn, you learn how to work with others. You learn how to flex your style in order to achieve a goal. Yeah. But you also definitely learn to pick up on, on, it's almost like a sixth sense to when something's out of harmony yeah. because when you go to competitions, so say you get to the world championship, you wake up in the morning and you don't have it. You're like, I don't have it today. I don't feel it. Yeah. Then you're out of sync. You're out of harmony. Yeah. And you need to know the tools that will quickly get you yeah. into the headspace. Otherwise, it's not going to be podium. <laughs> You know, it's, that medal won't shine if you if you don't bring that harmony oh, and that fine game. So how do you cope then? Because you're a solopreneur, aren't you? you yes. You, yeah, so you've gone from this sort of quite tight team thing, <laughs> um, working in corporate world and doing a, and now you're on your own. <laughs> how do you I know, <laughs> weird. <laughs> Did you find that transition difficult? No. I didn't. And the reason is because very early on, I knew I had to have a team around me. Yeah. And I've reached out. I, I created these meaningful and strong relationships around me. Yeah. So that I felt like I was part of a team if I needed it. 
but I was also enjoying the independence part of, of being able to make my own decisions and make my own mistakes, if you like, yeah, and, yeah. and learn from, yeah. from those. But if I needed help or a standing board yeah. or expertise, I had a network around, and I still do. Yeah. I have a network around me yeah. um, that I can reach out to and say, hey, what do you think about that? And that was really important for me mm. because if I didn't have that, I could spend a whole day on an email. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thinking oh is this the right way or is yeah. this not the right this way is perfect software <laughs> yes this, 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 this perfect so that's the time when you pick up the phone reach yeah. out and say yeah. what do you think of this boom done that's the beauty of teamwork and that's amazing. Oh, yeah, I, I agree because often I'll pick up, I'll have these wild ideas in my head and, and my, my hubby's now got used to, I've got my head in my hand going, I don't know how to make this work. He stops, he goes, do you need that? <laughs> I know. And then you go, oh, maybe not. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Just another thing to add on. I want to come back to this decision making because this is something I, I find really interesting that takes a certain amount of confidence and courage to make certain decisions especially if there's a, a risk involved um, and I think like you when I coach people I try not to use the word public speaking because people just go white and run away screaming in the opposite direction <laughs> but often when you dig down it's it's they there's the fear of getting it wrong yes and do you find that actually especially for women um, you know, coming into the business world and wanting to do well, that fear of, of getting it wrong overtakes to a certain degree. Very strongly. Yeah. The fear of getting it wrong is ingrained in us, especially yeah. women. Yeah. From childhood. Mm. What have you done? Always be, be the good girl, do things right. Yeah. Why did you go? Oh, you never get things right. And then we are conditioned with these yeah. messages, yeah. always wanting to do things right. Whereas I believe that men are raised a little bit differently. They've got more leeway. They can make mistakes, be a bit boyish. Um, and again, it's expected of them, isn't it? They grew up having to be the protector and the, you know. Yes. Yeah, I, know, I get that, yeah. And when it comes to our careers, women have these um, limiting beliefs yeah. with them. And I, I'm sure you do this as well in your work. You just dismantle those limiting beliefs that hold us back and, and, and we want to soar and rise and stand yeah. up. It's interesting because I tend to take a sledgehammer to the dismantling. So <laughs> Their, their limiting beliefs completely that I'm your girl, but I think actually you probably age and a lot gentler on people. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Seeing that, I, 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 I very clearly remember the first time someone confided in me and, and said, oh, I don't think I'm very good at this. And, and, and me, me thinking, oh, I, I never thought I wasn't good at something. And I don't mean it in a boastful way. No, no, I know way. what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. I always thought that if I put in the hard work, yeah. practiced, learned from my mistakes and, and did it again, then, yeah. then I could do anything. Yeah. And, and that definitely comes from sports because when, when you learn a new yeah. job, for example, yeah. the element, it's no way the first time you try it, it's like as absolutely no, yeah. no way I'm going to learn this. Yeah, there's a definite process, isn't there, within sports? Yes. Yeah. You know, keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And actually, I say to anyone who wants to speak confidently, just keep doing it and doing it. And doing it. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Don't be hard on yourself when, when you've done it the first time and you think, oh, I really mucked that up. That's okay. Yeah. Next time. Per perfection doesn't exist. You know, it's. Yeah. Doesn't. It doesn't <laughs> exist, so you might as well just go with what you've got. What is even perfection? Oh, I am. <laughs> oh, yes, you are. <laughs> it's funny because when it comes to doing what I do, the coaching thing, um, 
you know, I've got to a point in my life because I know I'm good at that and, I'm, and I know when I get results. Running a business is a whole other thing. Running a business is more like, do I really do what I'm doing? <laughs> yes, you do. Did know. I really need to do that? <laughs> Why haven't I done my account? <laughs> oh dear, yes, that's a very important question. <laughs> different things come at us, don't they? Different things. And um, so the future. Now, we're in a different world. Yes. I don't see it going back to what we um, recognised anytime soon, if ever. If ever. What, what do you, because I actually think that the smaller businesses are going to do better after this than the yes. bigger ones. Yes. One, because I think people have become more people-centric now. They, they, are becoming, they, they understand those relationships now and supporting each other. And secondly, because we never had the huge buildings and all the staff that we had to find money and investment for. So what are your thoughts on the future? Well, that's a big question, isn't it? <laughs> You've got but, a big confidence thing going there. Tell us. <laughs> well, I, I agree with you. I think small companies will be able to pivot and turn around and adjust yeah if they put their mind to it, but there yeah. will be some who, who, who are worried about change and they would want to keep the old ways yeah. and they will yeah. find it difficult to yeah. innovate. Yeah. Those who will be able to innovate, yes, they will do really well. And I think they will be able to work with the big corporates, the big organizations yeah. and provide the services that they need at yeah. times. Yeah, definitely. I can see a, um, a boom there. Um, but but before we get there, and that's that's one of my talks around resilience. Yeah. Well, part of my talk uh, about resilience is the idea of le letting go and, and grieving for, yeah. for a type of world that is no longer here yeah. and it might not might not come back again. Yeah. I don't believe we, we will ever go back to exactly the same space where we were because yeah. it's impossible, isn't it? Yeah. You, yeah. You, can, can't. you can't step back into the same river yeah. and we won't be able to. But the shift was so big that I find that people at the moment are still grieving, which yeah. comes with no, anger, sadness, anxiety, yeah. um, an array of emotions. Yeah. We'll have to, we will have to process this first before yeah. we can pivot and innovate and and go for it and but i think, this is I where think we that's are. a great place though for people like yourself that do a lot of work around that confidence stuff and that resilient stuff because we're allowed to be scared i think yes. we have to accept yeah. the fact that the future is a bit murky at the moment and it is quite scary because we do have families and houses and all of that yes but it's also about going yes i'm scared but i will go and get some help to be confident in, in where I take that step forward. So you all need Adrienne, really. Her. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I suppose we, we do need that inner confidence. We do, we do need someone to remind us that, hey, I know this yeah. is big, but you've been here before. Just yeah. think of all the times when you absolutely yeah. nailed it and did it and, and you we we have always overcome challenges yeah. and at the beginning of of the the coronavirus um crisis i kept saying it's okay it's it's a big crisis yeah but we've been through crisis before yeah we, we know how it goes we go up and down and That's then through it, it and yeah out of it this is big and scary but it's very similar to all the other crisis situations that we had in 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 the past which is life yes right. yes which is life <laughs> life is not an upward going no, straight no. line is it no there's no guarantee life is going to be perfect all the time no no matter what so what is guaranteed is that we can always do it yeah. we can always find a solution yeah. We, yeah. we are resilient yeah and we just need to remind ourselves. Yeah, and I guess that. Well, we just have to remember that the glass is half full. You know, that there are opportunities and we lose things, we gain things like every day. You know, yeah. that, that, that is how it works. And, and I think maybe the scary stuff just comes because politicians aren't being very clear about 
how we're moving forward. So often, and I and somebody I said to somebody the other day, they were saying, you know, I don't know what to do. I don't know. And I said, well, create your own reality. Stop. Don't wait for somebody else. You know, we know it's yes. murky. We know they they, you know, we don't always agree with them. So you decide what your new you will look like. Absolutely, and whether it's crisis time or not, there are some challenges in the world that are too big for one individual to fix. Yeah. But what can you do to fix it in your vicinity? And that's why I believe I love the summit idea. Yeah. I love the people coming together yeah. to chat about change and, yeah. and the future because that's tangible. I understand this. I'm talking here with you yeah. now. This is great. This is yeah. here now. If I start to think about change and where the world will be in 20 years' time, that's too big. I, yeah, I, I, like trying to eat the whole elephant. You can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't eat a whole elephant. Eat a whole elephant in one go. No, can't be you done. can nibble on their ears, right? <laughs> and it's true. What I'm doing. During this summit, I have been amazed at how some of the most simplest ideas have created huge impact. And then you've got other huge ideas that are just making us think differently and, yes. and, and that's why I wanted to do this I wanted to show people that you know we all we're all able to make our own little change in the world somewhere yes. and we yeah, can yeah. have a business and be heart led with it and we we can be businessy and we can be community so yes. it together well it's been a joy an absolute joy <laughs>